Short sentences drawn from long experiences. That's one of the many ways that our teacher, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, describes the wisdom that's found in the book of Proverbs. Welcome to Through the Bible. I'm your host, Steve Schwetz, inviting you to hop aboard the Bible bus as we set off to study some very familiar and favorite verses. So while you grab your copy of God's Word and find your seat, let's share a couple of letters from our fellow listeners. First, we've got an email. This is from our listener who's in Albania. He writes, I received a solar radio from a leader in my church. We are a new church, and I come from a different religion, so your programs are very helpful. I really didn't know anything about the Christian faith, and now I am learning. Thank you for loving us through your words. And next we hear from Joe. He's in Glendale, Maryland. I enjoy listening to Through the Bible on WAVA Radio in the Washington, D.C. area. I used to listen daily for a number of years until I had a job change, and the times didn't work out. I changed job sites again about three years ago and have been able to listen again between 5.30 and 6 a.m. every morning during my commute. It has been such a spiritual blessing and helps my daily walk with the Lord. Thank you for your continued work. It means so much to so many. I'm sure we will not know the full impact of your ministry on this side of eternity, but I wanted to let you know how you have impacted me. Well, thanks for the encouraging letter, Joe. It's nice to have you back on board the bus. And then here's a note. This is from David, who listens in Spanish. It is a joy to write to you. I've learned a lot in these few days of listening to you on my smartphone from Santiago, Chile. I constantly want to learn more about the Word of God that edifies me and corrects the way I live and the way that I understand God's will for my life. Lately, I have been lonely due to being separated from my wife. Listening to you makes me feel accompanied, and learning from our Lord Jesus Christ fills me with joy. Thank you, my brothers, and may God bless you. And then our final email comes from George. He's in North Carolina. I'm very happy to write to express my thanks to you and praise to God for the teaching and ministry of Through the Bible. Now retired, I am a daily Bible bus writer currently traveling through Isaiah. I'm grateful for the many ways that you make this teaching available on demand. My study today included the verse Isaiah 28:13, But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's the roadmap Dr. McGee used. What a blessing he still is to all of us who have the privilege of studying God's Word with him. George, we agree, and thanks for joining us in the Word each day. What are you learning as we study God's Word together? You know, hearing from listeners like these is really such an encouragement, and we'd certainly love to hear from you, too. So email your note to BibleBus at ttb.org. And remember, you can still mail it to Box 7100, Pasadena, California, 91109. If you're a Canadian listener, Box 25325, London, Ontario, N6C, 6B1 is where you need to send that letter. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Your word is much more precious than all of the riches in this world. So help us to delight in the wisdom that you have for us and open our eyes to the glories of your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Now, friends, last time we left off at the end of chapter 2 of the book of Proverbs. And if you have your Bible, I hope you will turn there. There were two warnings given to the young man as he started out in life. One was of the evil man, the evil man, and the danger of associating with him and of walking with him. That's always a problem for a young man. I ran away when I say ran away. My father died. Nobody was going to hinder me. But when I was about 16 years old, I went to Detroit, Michigan to work for the automobile industry. I didn't work for Henry Ford because, well, a Ford car didn't impress me too much. I went over and worked for Cadillac. And you probably have wondered why the Cadillac automobile is considered such a fine car. Well, it's because I worked there for a few months. Well, I got in with a wrong crowd, I can assure you. Bootleg days go over every Saturday night to Windsor, Canada. And 
never shall forget that as a boy I was introduced to a new world. I was with evil men. And thank God they made me homesick. And as a teenage boy, I finally, after a few weeks of that, and under conviction every minute of the day and night, I went home. And there's where a minister explained to me how you could have peace with God being justified by faith. And I never shall forget that. The evil man, the young man should beware of him. And then there's someone else, the strange woman. Now, the better translation would be stranger woman. Because here in verse 16, it says to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Now, who is the strange woman? Well, in Israel, God made a law that no Israelite woman was to play the prostitute. And I'm confident when anyone did that, that they were automatically put outside of the bounds of Israel. They were just as bad as a publican in later years, and they were put outside and classed with sinners. But the stranger was the Gentile that came in. She recognized that there'd be a place to ply her trade, and the prostitutes came in, and they were generally foreigners. They were the strangers that came in. Now, the young man is warned about her, and he's told here what might happen to him. It says, "...none that go under her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. They'll lose their health." I had a very fine elder in a church back east. He told me that the thing that almost wrecked his life, he says, just one escapade. He said, I went out on the town one night with the boys. And he says, that one night I picked up a venereal disease. And he said, I was years, and that was back in the old days, getting rid of it. And as a result, he says, it almost wrecked my life. God warns against that. And right now, in our contemporary culture, in which we're living today, in this new morality, which is old immorality, we find that venereal diseases are actually in epidemic situation here in Southern California, so we're told. And I remember that as a young man, again, running around with a crowd of fellas and We were in a certain organization where the leader of it was a very fine doctor. And I never shall forget, he saw that there were several of us doing a great deal of running around, and he called us in and said he just wanted to have a friendly talk with us. Well, he scared the daylights out of me, but somebody says, Oh, I don't think we ought to frighten these young people today. May I say to you, I thank God that he scared me. Oh, I was scared and frightened at the things that he told us. And may I say that that's exactly what the writer here to the Proverbs is doing. The evil man and the evil woman, let's say, but she's called a stranger here. Now, in chapter 3, why we continue this tremendous teaching, the steps of the young man are steps now that are steps of responsibility. You see, he's left the home, he's moved out into a life today, out where the rubber meets the road, out where he's coming in contact with reality. Now, this is advice that's given to him, and his steps need to be ordered according to the Word of God. Oh, how important that is today. Now, that's the reason this jeweler over in Dallas Years ago, gave out the book of Proverbs by the thousands, the young man. It's good advice, wonderful advice. Now, wisdom will be depicted to us as a woman here, but very easily. We know today that wisdom, it happens to be the Lord Jesus Christ. He has been made unto us wisdom, and we need him today. So the young man needs Christ. Now, here in chapter 3 again, It starts out, My son, forget not my law, 
but let thine heart keep my commandments. Now, we're on Jewish ground here. We need to understand that. But it has a great importance and significance for us today. He says here, do you notice? Let thine heart keep my commandments. Isn't that an interesting statement? Now, this is just more than just submitting to duty. I hear so much of that, that it's our duty as a Christian. It's our duty to do this. Now, my friend, you won't like this, but it's not duty. It's the loving devotion to the will of God. Remember what the psalmist said? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And You remember it was said of that young priest by the name of Ezra. He prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. Now, there needs to be today the preparation of the heart. The Lord Jesus had his own up there in the upper room. Remember how he talked to them so friendly, so intimately, so personally, and so wonderfully of things that had never been revealed before. And he said to these men, If you love me, keep my commandments. You love him? (laughs) Then he wants to talk to you. Now, don't come to me about this matter of duty. It's your duty to do this. Somebody said to me some time ago, I feel that since you're on the radio, it's your duty to say this. My brother, will you forget the duty part of it? I love the Lord Jesus. And... I really am trying to do what I think he wants me to do. He says for me to give out his word. He's sowing seed today. That's a picture of him, and I'm sowing seed under his direction. And I think that's the basis, my friend. That's the reason that sitting here in this studio and day after day making these tapes is wonderful. You know, if you love me, he says, if a man love me, he'll keep my say. And he said to Simon Peter, the fellow had denied him. My, how terrible it was. And you under to see a Galilee prepared breakfast for him. And I think Simon Peter avoided catching the eye of Jesus. Finally did. And our Lord looked at him and said to him, what do you mean denying me? He didn't say that, did he? What he said to him was, Simon, lovest thou me? If you love him, my friend, it makes life so much brighter, richer, and more wonderful. Listen to him now. Let not loving kindness and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and understanding in the sight of God and man. You see, loving kindness. Now, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Loving kindness. What is loving kindness? It's grace. But it's like the little girl said. She was asked by the teacher, what's the difference between kindness and loving kindness? And she says, well, if you go in and ask your mama for a piece of bread with some butter on it, and she gives it to you, says, that's kindness. But if she puts a little jam on it without you asking her, that's loving kindness. God puts a little jam on it, friend. Loving kindness and truth. Just let not these forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. You'll find favor and understanding in the sight of God and man. How wonderful this is. And we need today to recognize that the Word of God should be given out like this. Now I'm going to come to two verses that are very familiar today. When verses are called for in a meeting, somebody's going to get up and give Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I'm sure I've heard them a thousand times in meetings where their verses are given. And I sometimes wonder if Those who give them realize what a rich vein of truth they come out of. And they come out, remember, of this background of studying the Word of God. 
As Paul said to a young preacher, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, having done that, and then knowing something about the loving kindness, the grace and truth of God, and holding on to those things, now, he says, trust in Jehovah with all thy heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now, let's take a look at that for just a moment. It's, I think, a very solemn admonition, and yet it has such wonderful assurance to be guided in a way of peace and you know what a contrast this is. Later on, over in the 28th chapter, verse 26, he says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. A man was telling me the other day that he was witnessing to some of these that are in the drug culture, I guess. And he said to this young man, he says, God loves you, young man. And the young man says, I don't need God to love me. I love myself. I don't need to trust in God. I trust in myself. Well, I wish this man had given him this verse. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But it's wonderful to trust in Jehovah with all your heart, totally committed to him. And this is something that's, I think, so definitely needed today is a total commitment to him. Trust in Jehovah with all thy heart. I find myself again and again when certain situations arise. Or I'm even in an airport, and I find out that the plane I was to leave on, maybe his time's been changed, or it's delayed, it's bad weather. And I'm just not one of these that I just wasn't built with wings, and I never cared too much for flying, and I never expect to have wings in eternity either. But I generally go over to a corner of the airport, and I say, Lord, I want to trust you with all my heart. Now, just help me to sit down here and just rest in you. That's when I need him. Trust in Jehovah with all thy heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. And I go to the window, and I look at the weather, you know, and I make a prognostication. But he says, don't lean on thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. <laughs> he led me here. He led me there. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Now, I never did this before, I must confess. But until I had cancer, I took every day just as it came. There's a tide in the fires of men which taken up the flood leads on to fortune. That's the way I took life, but I don't take it that way anymore. Every time I come to a new day, I always like to go and look up at the sky and say, Lord, thank you for bringing me to a new day. Now, the sun may not be shining, or it may be, and it may be a gloomy day, or it may be a bright day, but whatever day, I thank him now. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct thy paths. It took me a long time, friends, to find out what that meant in life. And you remember the Lord Jesus in a Sermon on the Mount says, If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. That's an amazing thing. If you have committed yourself to God and you're going down a certain path, doing a certain thing, it's amazing how everything else drops into place. Your whole body is full of light. Your whole life is full of light at that time. Let me move on. This is a rich book, is it not? He says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Jehovah and depart from evil. It shall be healing to thy sinew and moistening to thy bone. You know, I think that actually it's good health to trust in the Lord. It's wonderful to rest in him and not in yourself. And we're told today, let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Get you away from sin. Get you away from these things that corrode not only your spiritual life, but actually your physical life. 
He says now, "...honor Jehovah with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine." Now, this is total commitment. Remember that God told Israel when he put them in the land, he says, "...the land is mine, I'm giving it to you." Now, they were to bring a tenth. I think they actually gave three tithes to the Lord. One went to the temple, but one they brought at the very beginning when they had a crop. You know what they brought that for? Just to acknowledge that God was the owner of it. And that is an evidence of total commitment. Now, don't tell me you're totally committed until your pocketbook is committed to the Lord, too, because he gave you everything. I don't care who you are. And somebody says, I worked hard and got this. Who gave you health to work? Who gave you the work to do? Who made it possible for you to make money? Why, my friend, God did all that for you. And you acknowledge him. That's the evidence of total commitment. Somebody says, this is pretty mercenary, preacher, you're moving to today. Oh, no, this is spiritual. Real spirituality is not the length of the prayer that you pray. It's the length of the check that you write. That's really the way you tell spirituality. I've always found out when I was pastor, that the person who did the most talking, did the less giving, it always was true. And the man or the woman who wants to run the church, they sure do not do very much for the treasure. You may be sure of that. God has put it on that kind of basis, and that's the way it is. Now he says, my son, despise not the chastening of Jehovah. God's going to chasten you as you go along through life. Neither be weary of his correction, for whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father, the son, in whom he delighted. Now, God never whips the devil's children, but he sure does spank his own. That's a good evidence that you belong to him. You remember in the book of Job, we saw this, Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth, therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. And by the way, this is not punishing. I would like to, and I wish I had time to dwell on this, we talk today a great deal about punishing criminals, and that's the word. We talk today, we punish our children. Don't you punish your child. Correct him. Punish the criminal. And I'm afraid we got some judges today that have got the thing all mixed up. I know a man, he's a judge. My, how he, when he's a little fella, he took him and slapped him across the room. I think he's wrong. He should have corrected him. That's his own. But he should have punished that criminal, but he let him off. My friend, we got it mixed up today. You punish criminals, you correct your children. How different it is. This is discipline, and this is what God uses for his own today. Now we are told here, verse 13, "...happy is the man that findeth wisdom." The man that getteth understanding, and happy is the man that findeth Christ. He's wisdom today. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Now, here in this book, wisdom has a school, and she's a she, because it's in contrast to the stranger woman. She's more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. God did promise long life in the Old Testament for those that served him. You see, we need to recognize today that the same kind of bravery that is exhibited by man in order to get precious metals and jewels and the wealth of this world well, we need to go after the Word of God like that. It needs to be like that. And we're told, Jehovah by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. You know, it takes a pretty smart person to run this universe. Only God can do it. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the skies drop down their dew. He says, My son, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. 
And we're going to leave off there today. We didn't quite finish this chapter, but we will, of course, next time and keep moving right along. This is a wonderful book, not only for young men, but young ladies and boys and girls, and older, middle-aged, and also it's good for senior citizens. Marvelous book. Classes from the Proverbs School of Wisdom will resume tomorrow at our regularly scheduled time. And in the meantime, if we can help you find a resource to deepen your own study of God's Word, please call us at 1-800-65-BIBLE or visit ttb.org. I'm Steve Schwetz, and I'll be here saving a seat on the Bible bus just for you. Jesus came home, him I We're so grateful for the faithful and generous support of Through the Bible's partners who are being used by God to take the whole word to the whole world.